Hi, this is Liz with Liz's Crafts, and today we're going to make useful Dollar Tree projects. And I'm out at the lake on Easter Sunday, and it's beautiful here. Slight breeze, and it just feels so nice. So we're going to start out with project number one. So for this one, I used my Cricut, and I printed up this week's menu with the weekdays, and I used the turquoise pin and the let's see if uh armadillo pin so it's a gray pin and a turquoise pin and now i'm just going to take this laminate from duck and i'm going to laminate the top of this week's menu however if you're going to use some liquid glue on the back of it to put it on the item you're putting it on you need to laminate both the front and the back or your writing and your ink will run so make sure you laminate both sides so don't do what I do I think if you're using hot glue it wouldn't make a difference but I use liquid glue and it did smear the ink so just keep that in mind so I'm just going to lay my menu, and I just used uh, regular cardstock, the 8.5 by 11, in the white. And I'm just going to lay that face down on my laminate. And then I'm just going to rough cut it with my scissors. Once I get that done, I am going to use my cutter there to cut the edges. However, I had to go back over it with the scissors, so you might as well just do it with the scissors and skip this step. I mean, it did work, but I really didn't get it close enough to the edge. And the scissors really work better for this. So don't even waste your time with this step. See, there I go with the scissors. And there it is, nice and laminated. And I'm gonna put it on this tin from the Dollar Tree. I'm not gonna do anything with the tin at all. It's just one of the rectangular ones that you can get there. And I'm gonna use my wood glue for this. And the wood glue comes from the Dollar Tree also. Now, like I said, um, if you don't want to laminate the back of it, you might want to use hot glue. If you're going to use any liquid glue, you do want to laminate the back of it. Or your ink will smear. Not at first, but it will later. Trust me, I know. Mine smeared. I'm just going to lay that down on top of my tin there and smooth it out. looks pretty good I'm just gonna set that aside and we're gonna work on this uh, pin here so this is just one of those dry erase pins and then I have a little round of um, sticky magnet and I'm just gonna cut it in half And I was going to stick it on the pin, but I had to hot glue it on there. Even though it was sticky, it wouldn't stay.
then there's just that little piece of magnet magnet tape I guess you would call it putting some hot glue on it I'm gonna put it on the pin but I want to make sure I have room for the cap if I want to put the cap on the uh, bottom end of the uh, pin there and I actually do put two strips of the magnet on there but I don't show the second one I put it on there later And then I just put these heavier bottles of glue on my menu there so it would tack down to the metal. Just smoothing it down a little bit more. And now I have these magnetic buttons from the Dollar Tree. These are the bigger ones. And I'm just going to use six of these. And even though they stick to the metal, I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. And I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot glue. So just a little bit of the uh, wood glue there. And then a dot of hot glue. And I'm going to put that on the back, one in each corner, and then one on in the middle on either side. Six in total, so that's about half a pack, because I think 12, 12 of them come in a pack. So this is a pretty inexpensive project, and it's something useful. You can put this on your fridge, and you can make up what you want to serve each day of the week and now you're going to see it on my fridge so meatloaf on on sunday and goes on down of course taco tuesday now on to project number two so for this one here i have this metal piece and chalkboard from the dollar tree it's the um the C collection or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to take the hanger off of it. Now I'm not going to cut it because I want to reuse it. So I'm just going to pull it out, leave that one knot on the one side. And then I'm going to take some masking tape and I'm going to go around the edges of it because I'm going to repaint this chalkboard. I used a chalk pin on it and uh, yeah it didn't work too well so I want to repaint over that before I do the DIY that I want to do with it so I'm putting the masking tape all around the edges And the paint I'm using is actual chalk, chalkboard paint, although I'm not going to use it for that, but I could if I wanted to. And then I'm just going to use my dauber. I'm not going to daub it, but I am going to just use it like a paintbrush. So I'm going to go in one direction and then I'm going to turn it and go, well, I guess I didn't turn it, but then I'm going to go in the other direction. So I went over it a few times. And while it's still wet, I'm taking off the masking tape. And you can see the lines on it. It looks pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but it's good. And then I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to dry the paint. Once I do that, I'm going to add the hanger back on, but I want the knot to be in the front. So I am going to add some hot glue to the end of my rope there to help me get it through the holes.
don't want to burn myself so I'm waiting a little bit before I touch it and then I'm going to thread it through the front hole on the one side and then bring it up through the other hole from the back so there's the knotted piece bring this through and then I don't want it as long as it is so I'm going to put my knot uh, further away from the end of the rope and then we'll just trim that off uh, before I trim it though I want to make sure it's the length that I want it to be because once you cut it that's it can't put it back see I was going to cut it and I was like no 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 let me see looks good so then I go ahead and cut it And now I have this, it's material, but I guess you could call it ribbon. It was given to me for another project and uh, I had quite a bit left over. So I'm just gonna use that and we're gonna make a pocket for this. And I'm just trying to determine how much of it I need. And I go ahead and cut quite a bit more than what I need just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna cut this uh, end piece off here so the edge is straight trying to decide which way I want it to go on here Now I'm going to turn this edge over and I'm just going to use my fingers when well, putting it on the side of the tin there and then I'm going to press it down just with my fingers. And then I'll go ahead and press the bottom part with my fingers too. That'll go over the bottom edge of the tin. And I'm going to cut a little square off down at the bottom so that doesn't get in my way when I go to fold this over and glue it. So now I'm just going to put some hot glue on the tin itself on the edge and then I'm going to put the edge of my material folded over there over top of it. And now I'm going to take all my markers out. So these are some Cricut markers. There's 30 in a box that I got from Amazon and uh, I've seen where people say you should store these upside down so that your ink stays towards the tip of the pen. So that's one reason why I wanted to create this uh, little hanging pocket was so I could put my pens in there upside down because in the box they're right side up. So I'm just putting all of them in there so that I know how big to make my pocket. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but somebody's out on the lake with a sea dew. <laughs> Just having fun. So now I've determined how much material I'm going to need for my pocket, and I'm just going to cut off the excess. 
once I get it cut off, I'm going to do the same thing to this side of it that I did to the other side. So once I get the glue on the edge of it, I'm going to put my edge down, but it's a little difficult to get it in the right place. And then I didn't leave myself enough room at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to take it loose. Tried to pull it down, but it was already stuck on there. So I'm just pulling that off. And then I decide instead of adding more glue to it, I'm just gonna use my uh, heat gun and I'm gonna heat the glue up so that it'll melt and I can use it instead of wasting more glue. Did you know you could do that? Just a neat little tip there. Of course, you probably already knew that. And now I want to cut that little corner out like I did on the other side so that, uh, you know, I can fold it easier. And I'm going to have to make a pleat in the front of the pocket so that it'll be bigger to hold all the pins. Because if you don't and you put it tight on the uh, metal piece there, you're not going to get all your pins in there. So I do have 30 pins and it does hold all 30 pins. So there I am making the pleat before I fold it over and I'm just going to glue it down. Glue down the pleat. It doesn't take very much glue at all. Once that gets glued down then I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom edge. And the hot glue works very well with the metal and the cloth. You know, it doesn't like to stick to metal a whole lot, but if you use cloth on it, it sticks really good. So I'm just going to cut that other little piece off that I didn't cut off before. And there I have my pocket. So I'm just putting my um, pins in there upside down. And these are the fine point pins. Like I said, I got them on Amazon. There were 30 of the different colored pins. You know, I um, saw other people saying that you want to stir the, store them upside down. So this will hang on my wall very close to my Cricut, so it'll come in handy, and you can always see the color from the uh, bottom end of the pins. So I'm just going to finish putting my pins in here. so nice here on Easter Sunday. This video will go out on Monday at 10 a.m. It has a nice breeze and it's not too hot, not too cold. How's the weather where you are? Let me know in the comments. So there's all 30 of my pins in the pocket and I have the hanger. And I can just put this on my wall right by my Cricut. So here it is hanging on my wall. I think it turned out pretty good, something useful. And now we'll get on with project number three. So project number three is a lot like project number two. I'm using the same material, but I'm using one of the round tins with the round chalkboard on it. 
So this leftover piece from our previous project is going to be the pocket, the little pocket for the front of our bigger pocket. And I'm just going to fold down the edge and I'm going to hot glue that down. And I have a Ryobi um, hot glue gun. I got it for Christmas and I really like it. It's a cordless rechargeable. Okay, now that I have my pocket glued down on the bottom, we're going to go on to the big pocket onto our tin round. And I'm just going to cut a piece of this material off. You could consider it ribbon. It's pretty wide. It's a nice, thicker material. So I'm just seeing where I want to lay it on there. Now I am going to fold over the other edge of it and I'm going to glue that down. Just like I did the previous edge and then once I get done with it, I'll do the two side edges. Guess I had to put a new glue stick in. So again, just folding down the edges on either side and holding them down with the hot glue. Now, I don't want my pocket to be uh, laying down flat on this round because I'm going to be putting several things inside of it and you need the room to put it in there. So um, you want to make sure you leave room and these little scrapers is what's going to be in the little pocket there on the front of it. So I'm just testing it out. Trying to decide where I need to put it on there. And then I decide to move on to the bigger pocket. Just letting you see that this is from the Shore Living. That's what it's called. Yeah, the Shore Living of Dollar Tree. This is one of their $1.25 items. And now I'm just going to hot glue the top edge on the back side of this. And then I'm going to glue the other side, the top edge, just a little bit. And this is going to leave room in the pocket for um, all the things I want to put in there. Now I'm just going to cut slits in the bottom of the fabric here so that I can uh, glue it up. And I'm trimming up some of this so I don't have as far to go up. I should have just trimmed around it before I started cutting slits in it. It probably would have been easier. Work smarter, not harder. Oh, did you see that hand there taking my scissors? That was my granddaughter. She was in the craft room with me when I was making this. She was doing her own craft. Didn't even realize her arm was in there until I was editing the video, but I thought, well, I'll just leave it in there.
So cutting the slits in, it just makes the fabric easier to lay flat on the back of your uh, piece there that's round. And if there's too much material, you can trim it down. That one, the slit wasn't long enough and it was gonna pucker, so I cut it a little bit more so it would lay flat. Now we're just going to do the same thing to the other side. And I think I hope you find these um, DIYs useful. You know, a lot of times we do all these DIYs and they're just things to sit around the house and collect dust, but these are actually something you can use. So if you don't have a Cricut though, you can put other things in your little pockets. You can put uh, scissors or pencils or pens, you know, just whatever you have, whatever you need. If uh, you sew, you can put sewing items in there. I mean, just, just whatever you have, whatever hobby you have or whatever, then you can you put items in it that you would need. And there's our pocket. And now I'm going to put the smaller pocket on top of it. So I'm going to start out with gluing one side down. And when I glue the bottom down, I'm going to put little puckers in it so that it's not a totally flat pocket. And you'll see that right here, where I'm just kind of pinching the fabric a little bit as I lay it down. And then all I have to do is put the glue on the other end. And this piece is complete. And I'll show you what I put in mine. So here's my scrapers. And now I have a pair of scissors, uh, some more sp some spatulas, and some um, tools used for weeding. Another tool, some more spatulas, and some more weeding tools. And then I have a popsicle stick one of the medium size, and then this little tiny pair of scissors that I put in the little pocket. So there it is, and I'm gonna be hanging it close to my Cricut. So what do you think of this project? So let's go on with our last project, number four. So for this one here, I have this little tin from the Dollar Tree. Kinda looks like a loaf pan, but it's not something you wanna cook in. And then I have these pieces of air dry clay that I made months ago and they are dry, but some of them kind of cracked apart, but we're still going to use them. And I'm just going to put them on this tin with my uh, Dollar Tree wood glue. It works pretty good. So I'm going to make sure when I glue these pieces together that um, I butt them up beside each other, make sure I get glue on the end of it so that it sticks together. So 
So I go to lay this piece down and then I realize that I didn't put the glue on the end of it. And uh, because it's broken apart, you definitely want to put glue on that end. So it was in three pieces, but um, I figured I could still use it. And you really can't tell too much once you have it together that it's three separate pieces. And it's going to be in the back anyway. So here I go with the third and last piece. Put the glue on the end and then on the back of it. And then I need to scooch it a little bit because it was kind of uneven from end to end. Some of it was like hanging over and some was too far in. So I wanted to make sure that it was centered properly. There it is. Now it does take a while for this wood glue to dry. Uh, you can probably use hot glue if you want to. Now I'm going to do the ends and I have some flowers here. Um, the piece that I put there on the back are leaves in a row. So these are like some roses with some leaves on them. So I'm going to put one on either end and again this is some air dry clay that I had put in molds and had dried that I had done months ago and I just had them stored in a bag for uh, use later on. So now I have both of the ends done and now I need to do the front. So the front, the leaves are all in one piece. That one stayed in one piece. I'm just pressing on this where those uh, two pieces meet. I'm just going to put a strip of the wood glue down the uh, leaves there on the back and put that on the front of our tin. Now once you get this done you want to set it aside to dry and with the wood glue you have to kind of hold it a little bit uh, you wouldn't have to do that, and I suggest maybe putting the wood glue in the center and then maybe putting hot glue on the ends, and that would help it stick a little better. Or, you know, uh, put some wood glue, some hot glue, wood glue, hot glue, wood glue, hot glue, hot glue, can't talk, and um, put it on that way. It would probably hold better. So now I just have this chalk paint from Folk Art. And a, wood, and a sponge dauber and I'm just going to daub it on my tin here. And I don't need full coverage on it. Some of the tin shows where the, uh, the uh, clay is. And I'm okay with that. If you don't want that, I guess you could use a, a paintbrush and get in the nooks and crannies. And this is kind of an off-white um, paint. I don't remember the name of it, but I did get it at, um, where did I get it? Anyway, I don't remember where I got it. I don't remember the name of this store. but it is chalk paint from Folk Art. So I did the one side and I'm just gonna continue on until I get all the sides covered. I do not do the bottom and I do not do the inside of this tin.
and I just make sure that is dry before I go on to my next coat of paint. Which I have a, um, a stand next to me. This is a Waverly chalk paint. Uh, what is it called? I can't tell what it's called. And this one is moss. I do know that one. But anyway, it's like a Caribbean blue or something. So I do have this um, storage thing beside me that I have my paints and paintbrushes and other stuff in it. And it's like a blue-green color, and that's the color I was trying for. So I thought these two, the green and the blue together, would kind of make that color. And I'm just, again, going to use my sponge dauber, and I didn't clean it off. And this was pretty close to the color of my storage uh, roller thingy, whatever you want to call it. But it wasn't really green enough. It was more blue. I go ahead with it, but you'll see that I uh, change that a little bit later. And it's easier to daub the paint on when you have it uh, down on your table. And it is if you're holding it because you're kind of, you know, you're pouncing on it and it's shaking and all that. But when you put it on the table, it's stable. And again, I'm just doing the sides. I'm not doing the bottom or the inside. And I'm making sure that I get over the uh, air clay pretty good. And I don't care if some of the white shines through. That's good with me. And so you'll see here I kind of run out of the blue that I mixed up. Just didn't quite have enough, which actually I guess turns out to be a good thing. So here I go, I'm going to mix some more, start with my blue. And again, these two are the Waverly chalk paints. And I'm not sure if this one is called turquoise or what. And then this one is the moss one. So I'm just mixing those two together. Come on out of the bottle. There it is. So I'm just going to mix this up. And then it looks to me like it's just too green. I don't want it that green. I'm trying to get it more on the blue side, but it needs to be some green in it. And that was just too green. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. going to mix it up with my pouncer there. And then I figure out there's a good way to hold it. And as you can see, this is a little more green than the other part, which was more blue. And this actually matches my rolling cart better. So this is a color I want to go with. So after I get done with this side, I'm going to put this color paint on all the sides on top of what, what is already there. And it's just like a shade greener. 
but it makes a difference that it matches my cart perfectly. I'm just going to go over the top edge there. Just trying to pick it up. Thought I could spread my fingers there and pick it up that way. Trying to decide how can I pick this up? And then I just touched it. So I had to uh, add a little more paint to that. And there it is. And there it is all dry. And it's ready for me to fill up with my tools. So there's my, um, oh, what do you call this one? Where you cut wood at an angle if you want. There's my crocodile. And then I have three different um, hole punches. One is a bigger one, one is a smaller one, and then one is a heart. And then I have my staple remover and my uh, hand sander. And they fit in there nicely. And there it is, and the color matches really good to my rolling cart. Well, I think it turned out really good what do you think of course now in this picture it looks blue but it is not blue it's more of a greenish blue so out of these four projects which one do you like the best I like them all because they're all useful again I'm Liz with Liz's crafts and if you like what you see here please give me a thumbs up and I want to thank my subscribers and uh, those of you who just watch my videos I totally appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed, would you consider subscribing? And if you know others that might like my videos, uh, please share it with them.